Um, so let's just get the obvious out of the way. <laughs> yeah. This is a huge moment for a lot of fans of yeah. The Killing. Yeah. yeah. Um, when did you realize that a reunion was going to be a big part of the show? Well, it's all Marais making. <laughs> yeah, I was um, in conversation with David Farr about doing the show, and um, so we teamed up, and then they were obviously looking for uh, an Eric, and uh, David admitted to me that Joel was at the top of the list, and I was thrilled, and so I started, like, my texting game <laughs> to try to get him Well, first she, was, first, okay. she was, first she was texting me and, like, asking me, like, for suggestions of European actors in, like, mid-40s. So I was, like, putting together a list <laughs> yeah. of, like, Mads Mikkelsen and, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it came around and was like, actually, they're going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, oh. I was like, I don't know if it's right for you. You might totally not want to do it. Yeah. Um, but I was really thrilled at the prospect. And then it worked out. Yeah. I, I think for both of us it was really important that if we were going to do... Uh, like a reunion, which we both wanted, uh, it had to be something that was very different from the killing. Mm. So, and this, you know, the dynamic was polar opposite. So it was perfect. Yeah. I think um, fans of the killing and fans of you two in particular are going to be hyped for uh, seeing you on opposite sides, mm -hmm. as well as knowing that you two text each other. Yes, <laughs> 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 we do. Yes. Um, so obviously, based on a movie. Yeah. Um, were you uh, fans of the movie beforehand? Did you get to? Did you watch? It? Did it inform your performances? <laughs> did you try to ignore it and do your own thing? Maria has he not made... seen any movies, <laughs> like zero movies. She does not watch anything. Yeah, I live under a rock with my little small children, um, so I have to get him to tell me the plots of everything. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll tell her who people are and what they've done, and <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I hadn't seen it as per okay. usual. Um, but you know, when I was talking to with David Farr, he his big change in doing this series is he wanted to shift the tone and um, ground it and make it more naturalistic, and um, so it, it didn't. That would really depart from that movie, you know, that you haven't seen. <laughs> so then I, I went ahead and didn't see it because, <laughs> because what we're doing is, is something else. It's a different telling of it. <laughs> yeah, but it, I, I really like the film as well, but, um, or as a, as a part to you. You like the most uh, of Yeah, no, but, but it was, it, it was um, I mean, it is a really compelling thing when the, you know, one of the originators of, of that story, of the original story, it feels like he has something left to tell, mm -hmm. you know, that there's something that um, left to do there. And, and and I really like the idea of, like, grounding the story and, mm. um, and making it more into a natural, less kind of a fairy tale-ish mm -hmm. um, story that the Joe Wright film was. And, yeah, it, it was a really, the, the writing was so good. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's fun to be offered the bad guy, but it's especially fun when you're also given someone who's so nuanced and um, who can elicit empathy. And, um, you know, everyone here, there's no kind of black and white. All of us do terrible things and then have moments of incredible generosity and um, seek redemption. And um, so that's exciting storytelling. Yes, yeah, so Mira, your character is so complex. Yeah. Um, she has her own family, yeah. and yet she's also so uh, career-driven, and mm -hmm. she wears amazing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, were, were those yours, or were they? they... No, no, not mine. <laughs> we had an incredible wardrobe designer who um, like handpicked everything. The textures, there's so many different countries and time periods and textures in this, and she just created this amazing world from the forest to, obviously, you know, Marissa in, in Paris. So working on, uh, when you were working on The Killing, that was mm -hmm. AMC, that was like, not, kind of the early days of, of that that mm -hmm. kind of really uh, frontier cable We're program. not that old, okay. I, <laughs> I didn't say you <laughs> were. <laughs> and moving to Netflix for the final season yeah. of that, but and now Amazon, where it's like, there there are no rules, like there's such a lack of distinction between film and television. Mm -hmm. um, how does that inform your performances when you when you say, oh, we don't have to worry about not saying, dropping F-bombs or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I just think that the audiences and the stories have both evolved. You know, mm -hmm. 
because there's so much um, so much content out there, the audiences have been trained to become more and more sophisticated. So the the creators have to keep up with that, and um, and I think that is best done in an environment where you don't have to have any like restraint in terms of like what the uh, you know ad buyers don't like and so on. You can just really focus on the story and tell that truthfully. And uh, and I, I mean I think we've just seen an evolution of of all the stories just becoming incredibly complex and, mm -hmm. and and audiences not just accepting but expecting it to be complicated and nuanced and and that's what they're looking for so you know it's just a really exciting time to to be a part of like film and television and, and and being part of telling these kind of stories where you're allowed to you know go into so many different areas. Where everything's so cinematic, people aren't really thinking about in terms of tone, oh, we're making a TV show or we're making a film. We're, I mean, it's all it's all film. You know, we, we screened in Berlin the first two episodes in this massive movie theater on a huge screen and it didn't, it didn't there was nothing missing. It was absolutely cinematic. And that's, that's really exciting that you can do, you can do film in long form. Did you see when he punched a guy into a pit of fire? Yeah. That was nuts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so your character, Joel, is, um, you know, at the start, we see him in the forest. And then as, as it moves on, you know, it gets uh, more urban in setting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the beard, the longer hair, the how that kind of shapes your character? You know, how much does it feel like when, as an actor, when you're putting on a costume, you're putting on your acting uniform? I mean, it does. It's a. It is a really important process. You do like do. There is a transformation that that happens, and I'm. I all especially in costume fittings. There are really sensitive, very important processes for me because that's mm -hmm. when it, something doesn't happen there. Then I usually struggle a little bit, and and something has to happen. And the the idea that I have with a character's maybe posture, tension, mm -hmm. you know, like the different aspects of the body that I've sort of envisioned for the character, the clothes have to sort of fit into that and, and it affects how you carry yourself. And, um, and when you go into full like Geico commercial mode as I did, <laughs> with just like the stone age man. Um, I mean, it's even more, I mean, th then there's this little aspect that is can actually work against you because everything is like itching and, uh, you know, you have this fake beard and wig and all that stuff. But, um, you just got to find a way to ma just make it feel. I just envisioned that I had a lot of, you know, like lease and like little things growing inside of my hair. <laughs> yeah. It was all alive. <laughs> right. And kind of on the opposite end of that, that yeah. spectrum, your character uh, is dressed uh, in such a powerful way that she can, yeah. you know, melt someone by looking at them. Can you talk just a little tiny bit about that? Yeah, well... So there's a 15 year gap between when we meet her and then when we find her again in Paris. And I felt like that story was super important, the woman that she was. And there was lots of conversation about um, what to do with my hair in that change. And I felt very strongly that it, we had to chop it off. Like when we, when we meet her at the beginning, she has to be a man. She has to be this like, visceral animal, um, that she's not, her power is not connected to any idea of beauty. Although, I mean, I find that look actually very powerful and beautiful, but she's just very masculine, hard lines. And then as she's evolved, she gets dropped behind a desk in Paris and she learns how she can find power in softening herself. And, but that animal is still there, but she can use grace to get what she wants instead of just brute force.